This painting captures one of the most mind-boggling aspects of a Christian view of, of Mary, which is that she's the mother of a child who she must care for and nurture, but at the same time that child is, as well as being human, is divine. And that Christian belief in the two natures of Christ, human and divine, means that she is also a creature of her child, someone created by the God who she now has given birth to. It is mind-boggling. And so she's, in a sense, also the child's worshipper as well as its mother. And I think we see some elements of that mystery, as the church would call it, in this extraordinary painting. This is what we call in art history the adoration of the Christ child. And as you describe, here she is shown kneeling with her hands clasped in prayer, adoring her child. In this work by Fra Filippo Lippi, this is a Florentine artist working in the mid 15th century, one of the preeminent artists of Florence. He is painting this for very exalted patrons, none other than the Medici rulers of Florence for their private family chapel. So we have to imagine this artwork as one of the kind of pinnacles of Renaissance art. This is a very unusual adoration of the child. And in fact, this painting is also known as the adoration of the child in the forest, which is very unusual. More often we might see these figures near the manger or the stable. And when we see the Christ child here laid out on the ground, like this and actually emanating light. And you can see that Lippi has evoked that with the descent of light from the dove there, but that the light is actually emanating from the child as well. These ideas we don't have in the gospel texts, but we do find them in mystical writings from the 14th century. So I think the patrons and the artist here are drawing on these other associations of how the child appeared and how the Virgin would adore her own child. And the divinity of the child is especially accentuated, isn't it, by this vertical line that connects him to the dove, which represents God the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and above the dove, God the Father, the three persons of the Trinity as they're known. Um, so that sense of the divine presence is especially intense here. Her devotion is interestingly picked up by that figure in the left-hand background. Yes, there's a friar. <laughs> that is St. Bernard of Clairvaux in the distance there. So he's a Cistercian, mm -hmm. which was a particularly strict form of the Benedictine order. And it's interesting, isn't it, the way that their hands echo each other and sort of establish a visual link between the two. Mm -hmm. One of the things prized by the Cistercian order and most of the religious orders of the West was celibacy, and they associated with the Virgin's virginity. Uh, as a model, if you like, for their own, own lives. And it was a widespread belief in the church that it wasn't only that Mary conceived while a virgin, but that she remained a virgin throughout her life. In that sense, almost a model for lifelong vows of celibacy, of the kind that St. Bernard himself would have taken. These vows that you've just described in terms of uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux were also taken up by this painter, Fra Filippo Lippi, the Fra in front of his name referring to his title as Frate or Friar. So he also belonged to a religious order. He took these vows of chastity, but as you may already know, he actually produced a son, Filippino Lippi, who became one of his great pupils along with Sandro Botticelli. So as we do know, some of these vows were not always followed through. I guess he, he didn't succeed where Bernard and Mary did. Exactly. What we're missing from the context of this altarpiece is actually it was situated, as I mentioned, in a private family chapel, something the Medici had to secure the Pope's permission for. So this was an exceptional commission. And that chapel exists to this day in the family palace in Florence. And it's decorated with a series of frescoes by Benozzo Gozzoli representing the procession of the Magi. So if we reinsert this object visually into that context, we might imagine that we are in the company of the procession of the Magi, converging on this altarpiece, really taking up the position that Bernard of Clairvaux has, that we have the young Saint John the Baptist here also inclining himself towards the Christ child, the way the Virgin is also kneeling with her hands in a gesture of prayer. I think they are providing models for us in front of this altarpiece. That is the behavior we are meant to imitate in front of this artwork. We join in with that worship. If you think of the shafts of light with that responsive answering puff of light, 
as almost like a connection, almost an umbilical cord between this child and heaven, mm. there's also a wonderful sense, an intimate sense of his continuing connection with his mother, even though she's separated herself from him in laying him down, because her veil spills out and becomes his gauzy covering. So it's almost as if there's an umbilical cord binding him not only to his heavenly origin, but to his earthly origin, to his beloved mother who has all her attention focused on him. <laughs>